time has arrived and I call the city council meeting to order. Please stand and salute our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. President, yep. if, we Council might, if, we all, if we could all remain standing for just a couple of quick moments, I would like to take a moment of silence for a very well-known Brocktonian who passed away last week, a uh, resident of Ward 3 for a good, good many years, his childhood days, to be truthful with you, his old homestead is still there. And as you know, that's Mr. Carl Landerholm um, who passed. So um, without saying other than what's been said so, so nicely about him in the newspaper the last you know, several days and um, understand he had an outstanding uh, turnout for his uh, um, funeral the other day as, as well. Uh, you know, I, I think he just deserves a, you know, a moment of silence coming from us. And I know he served once as a building uh, inspector. I believe he was under Mayor Pataro, uh, Mayor, excuse me, Mayor Fowle um, as the building inspector. So um, a great guy and, and a great historian to the city. Um, we're losing some of them, unfortunately, but I just want to take a moment of silence uh, for him. Thank you, and I'm sure he would he would appreciate every moment that that had. Thank you. Well, good evening, councilors, and uh, welcome to our January 28th meeting. Mr. Clark, if you could read agenda item one. We have the acceptance of the minutes of the January 14th, 2019 City Council meeting. That will be accepted and placed on we file. We have the report of the Finance Committee for its meeting of January 22nd, 2019. That will be accepted and placed on file. We have a hearing, an audience, amending Chapter 27 of the revised audiences of the City of Brockton concerning the regulations and taxation of marijuana. Be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton, Article 3, General Regulations and Permitted Modifications is hereby amended by adding the following sections, 27-24.4, Adult Use of Marijuana. In Council, March 26, 2018, ready to refer to the Standing Committee on Ordinance and Planning, report were favorable as amended. In Council, December 27, 2018, referred to planning. Time having arrived, I declare the hearing open. Is there anyone here in favor of this order? If so, please step forward and give your name to the clerk. Anyone in favor of this order? Can't hear? What he just read about the marijuana ordinance in the city. Anyone in favor? If you are, please step up and, uh, and give your name to the uh, clerk. No? Post. I declare that portion closed. Is there anybody here in opposition to the ordinance? Is there anyone here in opposition? If so, please come forward and give your name to the clerk. Anyone in opposition? Hearing none, I declare that portion closed. The question is on ordination by, as amended, and I ask the clerk to please call the roll. Oh, Madam Clerk, it's your on this end. <laughs> Okay, so my council, um, my advice to the city council is to wait until January 14th because we do not have February final, 14th. February 14th, excuse me, because we don't have a planning board recommendation one way or the other. The prior recommendation has expired and the ordinance as amended created substantial changes to what they had previously already recommended as favorable. Um, the planning department is meeting on February 5th um, and the Massachusetts law requires um, to have the report from the planning department before any passage. Um, so my recommendation to the city council would be for a motion um, to postpone for final passage until the February 14th hearing, uh, city council meeting. Motion to postpone until February 14th. It's the first Monday, or not the 14th, February 11th. 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 February 11th. 
Okay. It's the first Monday, our first meeting in February. Motion to postpone till February 11th. Second. Second. Love the motion. Yes, uh, Council Sullivan. Uh, Mr. President, you, you, you sat with me on the ordinance last year, and I'm just going to ask, because we're going to have some time if this passes, I'm going to ask our legal counsel if she could just vet out again. My notes from that from that meeting on 1218 differ slightly with some verbiage changes. Um, I'll be happy to go over it with the, the attorney. Yep. But, but I just want to make sure we catch everything that we lawfully voted for uh, as a committee that night. So, Thank you. So, so be it. Anything else? Uh, the motion has been properly made and properly seconded. All those in favor of postponing until our February 11th meeting? Anyone opposed? So be it. Communication from the school department chief budget officer requested that the city council authorizes the superintendent to submit to the Massachusetts School Building Authority the statement of interest form dated February 14, 2019 for the Huntington Therapeutic Day School located at 1121 Warren Avenue, Brockton, Mass., for consideration under MSBA Priority Category 5, replacement, renovation, or modernization of school facility systems such as roofs, windows, boilers, heating, and ventilation systems to increase energy conservation and decrease energy-related costs in a school facility. Accepted and placed on fire. Have a communication from the mayor in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, requested that the City Council authorize the superintendent to submit to the Mass School Building Authority a statement of interest form dated February 14, 2019 for the Huntington Therapeutic Day <coughs> School located 1121 Warren Avenue, Brockton, which describes and explains the deficiencies and the priority categories or categories as delineated on the addendum for which an application may be submitted to the Mass School Building Authority in the future. Huntington School Roof and hereby further specifically acknowledges that the submitting this statement of interest form, the Mass School Building Authority, in no way guarantees the acceptance or the approval of an application. The awarding of a grant or any other funding commitment from the Mass School Building Authority or commits the city, town, regional school district to file an application for funding with the Mass School Building Authority. So the, the mayor is recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. The CFO has a certi uh, conditional certification from the CFO in accordance with Section 5 of Chapter 324 of the Acts of 1990, certifying that the City Council authorizes the submission of the Statement of Interest Form, SOI, only to the Mass School Building Authority, MSBA, dated February 14, 2019, for the Huntington Therapeutic Day School located at 1121 Warren Avenue, Brockton. Mass. The addendum describes and explains the deficiencies of priorities and categories for which an application may be submitted to the MSBA in the future. Huntington School Roof and hereby further specifically acknowledges that by submitting this statement of interest form, the MSBA in no way guarantees the acceptance or the approval of an application, the awarding of a grant or any other funding commitment from the MSBA or commits the city of Brockton to file an application for funding. With the MSBA, furthermore, the city council and mayor should be aware that the MSBA regulations indicate that a SOI should not be submitted unless the community has the ability to fund the project within two fiscal years. This will entail appropriating funds for planning and feasibility as well as construction. At the present, these costs are unknown, but in his opinion, funding these costs most likely will have a negative impact on continuous provisions of services unless the city obtains a favorable vote on a debt exclusion. Accepted and placed on fire. From the I'd like to make a motion to take number 31 out of order tonight and also act it on it tonight uh, under suspension of rules. Second. Uh, second. The motion has been properly made and properly seconded. All those uh, in favor of taking 31, uh, 30 and 31 out of order. So, uh, 31 relative to the Huntington. And then after number 12, I believe 30 would be applicable at that time. Okay. All those in favor? Opposed? We'll oh. take them out of order. 
order that the city council authorizes the superintendent to submit to the Massachusetts School Building Authority the statement of interest form dated February 14, 2019 for the Huntington Therapeutic Day School located at 1121 Warren Avenue, Brockton, Mass, relative to roof repairs. Thank you, uh, councilors, for having having us here tonight. Um, I just want to always thank this body. I've been in front of you twice with the superintendent and the school committee, once in 2011, uh, again in 2015. Um, during those two times, we've secured $50 million in funding to fix um, 14 of our school buildings, roof, windows, boilers. Uh, out of that $50 million, 80% of that is picked up by the Mass School Building Authority. So tonight we're in front of you asking permission only to submit the statement of interest, which are applications for the Huntington School roof and the renovation of the North Middle School. Um, what these do, these, uh, you, your vote allows me to submit the application only, and if those applications are accepted, then obviously we would need to come back to you uh, to review the funding, the price tag on the projects, and obviously nothing would move forward in, unless you voted to approve that as well. But it is a, the roof project moves more quickly. It's called the accelerated repair, so that would move quickly for the Huntington School. You would pretty much have a price, you'd probably have an answer that's due by February 15th. You would have an answer by April 1st, whether we're accepted for that, and then that would move pretty quickly through uh, the summer and then they tried to put the roof on by the end of the fall. The north project would be a much longer process. Um, that would be a, a year. They would, the MSBA would set up a committee. There would be a subcommittee from the city council, a subcommittee from the school committee to actually review what would you actually would want to do with north. Um, how many students would go back there, uh, whether you wanted to make it a STEM school, uh, put more money into science labs, computer labs. So that would actually be a longer process that would involve the community, the elected officials, and that would determine actually how much the building would cost. And that would be a full year um, planning process before you would decide um, what to do with uh, North Middle School and how to bring that back online. So that's how the MSBA process, you know, works itself out. So what are we going to take this basically? Questions, if, if are need. Are there any uh, any questions, concerns? Uh, no, Council Powell, you, you, uh, if I'm right, you've already done quite a bit of work so analyzing the North Junior High School. What might happen if it's remodeled? Where the students would go? I, I assume, and so perhaps that information can come to us. I mean, clearly both projects are critical, yeah, and uh, the more information, the better. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, that's no problem. <coughs> Motion for favor, recommendation. Second. I'll make it a roll call vote. Yeah, because it's an order. I'm, I'm actually getting pretty good at this. The uh, question is on ordination by a roll call vote. Huh? Isn't it an order? Well, maybe I wasn't getting so good at this. <laughs> the, the question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please read the, the roll call. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darincourt? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monahan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative. Mr. President, I move for reconsideration. The lack not prevail. A motion for reconciliation in hopes that it does not uh, succeed has been made and properly second. All those in favor of reconciliation? All those opposed? So be it. And it fails. Huh? Now we're going to do number 12. 10, 11, and 12. 10, 11, and 12. Okay. Got it, Mr. Clerk, please. Okay. You ready? Here we go. Okay. From the Chief Budget Officer of the School Department requested that the City Council authorizes the Superintendent to submit to the Mass School Building Authority the Statement of Interest form dated April 11, 2019 for the North Middle School located at 108 Oak Street, Brockton, Mass. The school, <coughs> the school should be considered under MSBA Priority Category Number 1, replacement or renovation of a building 
which is structurally unsound or otherwise in a condition seriously jeopardizing the health and safety of school children, where no alternative exists. If a district selects this priority, the MSBA must receive a hard copy of the engineering or other professional report detailing the nature and severity of the problem and a written professional opinion of how imminent the system failure is likely to manifest itself. The report must be from an independent source that is not under the control of the school district or the city or town. In addition to the independent <coughs> report, the district must submit photographs of the conditions which cause the district to select priority number one. In order to bring this school up to the standard requirements for, for a middle school, current state building codes and ADA, American with Disabilities Act requirements, a total rehab is necessary. The school will be required to update to the electrical, heating, ventilation, bathrooms, fire codes, as well as student needs. That's accepted and placed on file. From the mayor, in accordance with Mass General Laws Chapter 44, requested the city council authorizes superintendent to submit to the Mass School Building Authority. The statement of interest form dated April 11, 2019 for the North Middle School, located at 108 Oak Street, Proctor, Mass, which describes and explains deficiencies and the priority categories. Uh, category. The delineated of the addendum for which the application may be submitted to the Mass School Building Authority in the future. North Middle School full renovation and hereby further specifically acknowledges that by submitting this statement of interest form, the Mass School Building Authority in no way guarantees the acceptance or the approval of an application. The awarding of a grant or any other funding commitment from the Mass School Building Authority or commitments to the city to bring strike that, City of Brockton to file an application for funding with Mass School Building Authority. The mayor recommends the same. Accepted and placed on file. We have a conditional certification. Okay. That is from the CFO. In accordance with Section 5, Chapter 324 of the Acts of 1990, certifying that the City Council authorized the submission of the Statement of Interest Form SOI only to the Mass School Building Authority, MSBA, dated April 11, 2019, for the North Middle School, located at 108 Oak Street, Proctor, Mass. The addendum describes and explains the deficiencies in the priority category or categories for which an application may be submitted to the MSBA in the future. North Middle School, full renovation, and hereby further specifically acknowledges that by submitting the statement of interest from the MSBA in no way guarantees the acceptance or the approval of an application. The awarding of a grant or any other funding commitment from the MSBA or commits the City of Brockton to filing an application for funding with the MSBA. <coughs> Furthermore, the City Council and Mayor should be aware that the MSBA regulations indicate that an SOI should not be submitted unless the community has ability to fund the project within two fiscal years. This will entail an appropriation funds, planning and feasibility, as well as construction. At the present, these costs are unknown, but in his professional opinion, funding these costs most likely will have a negative impact on continuous provision of services, unless the city obtains a favorable vote on a debt exclusion. That's accepted and placed on file. Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to um, take number 30 out of order. Second. The motion has been properly made and properly and second. And act on it this evening to take uh, 30 out of order and act on it tonight. All those in favor? Anyone opposed? We will do that. Uh, Mr. Clerk, number 30, please. 30, the order. In order that the City Council authorizes the superintendent to submit to the Mass School Building Authority the Statement of Interest Form dated April 11, 2019, for the North Middle School, located at 108 Oak Street, Brockton, Mass., relative to standard requirements for middle school current state building codes, and ADA requirements. Uh, thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, uh, councils, I know that uh, the, super, the Deputy Superintendent is here. Would you like to come up and uh, give us uh, your take on this? He already did on this. I, this I, I wasn't quite listening. Could you just do it again? Yeah, so this is about North. This is for North. Yep. So, sure. Um, as you know, um, because of this body, you um, put through a half million dollar facilities master plan, which was approved, uh, which laid out 
our school buildings that would need to be renovated and uh, north was near the top of the list of, um, for need of a total renovation obviously built in uh, 1959 um, other than a roof and windows there's um, and some new boilers there has not been much work is done as renovation so it's in a, a dire need of an upgrade to the electrical system the plumbing system um, total renovation of the classrooms um, storage areas the gymnasium so um, the, the fire alarm needs to be upgraded uh, obviously sprinkler system uh, it needs to be ADA compliant an elevator would have to be added to the building the entrances would have to be changed and made wider so uh, obviously it's a total renovation which is much needed and hopefully as part as the part of the facilities master plan this would be the first phase of starting to renovate our <coughs> older buildings so um, as you know the school committee voted last year to um, start to empty out north of students right now instead of having sixth seventh and eighth grade at north we only have seventh and eighth grade the eighth graders will graduate uh, move on to high school um, in June next year we will only have eighth graders there and then after the eighth graders leave the hopefully the you know if we get the application the building will close and then um, we would start the renovation so that's that's pretty much the plan that's been laid out thank you sir any question <coughs> if i might mr chairman yes. <coughs> right now um deputy superintendent um now the principal is no longer there in the building is that correct and is the assistant principal yes the assistant will become the interim principal uh for this year and next year and for this year and next yeah, year and it the principal has moved on to the brookfield school is, is it the brookfield same assistant principal? is it mrs mccormick or yeah she, mrs mccormick uh miriam mccormick she's been there for a uh, long time well, she's been here her whole career no, oh she well. taught over there for no. years and now um, she's been in the assistant principal for 15 years and now is the okay. interim principal and, and then we'll go from that yeah okay and exactly. then will she go will she be re relocated or will, will she, she would be relocated if, okay. know, once the school closes yes Correct. right okay yeah, she's you. one of our most tenured administrators okay. i know how she got there thank you yeah <laughs> thank you counselors any any other questions uh, the motion has been properly made and properly second uh, the question is on adoption by a roll call. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Uh, ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darincourt? Yes. Enery? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Mr. President? Yes. Consideration Counselor. and hopes it does not yes. prevail. Second. A motion has been for has been made for reconciliation and hopes that it does not carry all those in favor of reconciliation all those opposed it fails mr president if i might just a quick note that uh, i thought we should mention that school committee vice chairman mr minicello school committee members judy sullivan tim sullivan and mr d'agostino are all here tonight supporting the uh, uh the issue so i just want to make note of them being in the, in the audience duly noted I think it gets paid well, is that what you just said? Hey, no, I just said it gets paid. Oh, okay. All those here too, but we didn't have to mention it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kirk. Thank you, Counselor. Uh, Thank Mr. You. Clark, I think we should continue on with the agenda so we can uh, number, 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 number seven. Okay, let me do that. Okay. Did they want a recess of any type for these? No, just to go to the one door. From the executive health officer requested that the mayor and city council accept the sum of $7,109.69 from the Massachusetts Association of Health Boards for the purpose of building the level of volunteers and equipment for our area medical reserve corps. Uh, accepted and placed on fire. From the mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. From the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. There you go. There go four. Uh, 13. We're going to 13. From the mayor, in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, in order to fund the agreement between the city and the Brockton City Employees Union regarding a compensation and position reclassification study, hereby recommends that the City Council authorizes the appropriation of $73,000 from the Stabilization Fund to the following. Auditor's Department Personal Services other than overtime, $872. Animal Control Personal Services other than overtime, $18,138. 
DPW Administration Personal Services, other than overtime, $52. DPW Refuse Division, Personal Service, other than overtime, $2,199. Information Technology Personal Services, other than overtime, $14,502. License Commission Personal Services, other than overtime, $52. Mayor's Office Personal Services, other than overtime, $3,000. Police Personal Services, other than overtime, $30,000. Veterans Services Personal Services, other than overtime, $1,462. Weights and Measures Personal Services, other than overtime, $2,244. The letter of agreement is a result of lengthy bargaining between the city and the union over the upgrades and reclassification study conducted by D.I. Jacobs Consulting Company, Inc. The study was agreed to as part of a memorandum of understanding for the period of 7116 to 6319 between the City of Brockton and Brockton City Employees Union. The total amount is $72,521. That, that's accepted and fixed on fire. We have a conditional certification from the CFO in accordance with Section 5 of Chapter 324 of the Acts of 1990, certifying the proposed appropriation of $73,000 for the purposes of funding the side letter of agreement between the City of Brockton and Brockton City Employees Union for future years. This agreement will place a modest financial pressure on the provision of services due to expected tight budgets. However, this agreement is fair to both city and employees and recommends funding it. Uh, that's acceptable and placed on fire. 50. From the city auditor certifying the balance of the stabilization fund as of January 7, 2019 is $4,561,629.99. Accepted and placed on file. From the Mayor in accordance with the Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, recommending that the City Council authorizes an appropriation $80,000 from the Stabilization Fund to the Fire Department of Personal Services non-overtime in order to fund the cost provisions of the attached side letter between the City and the Firefighters Union, effective January 1, 2019. The hazardous duty stipend will increase by 1%. The terms of this side letter of agreement state that all parties shall not be obligated to any additional bargaining over this issue during negotiations of the successor fiscal 2019 through fiscal 2020 collective bargaining agreement. That's accepted and placed on file. We have a conditional certification from the CFO in accordance with Section 5 of Chapter 324 of the Acts of 1990, certifying the proposed appropriation of $80,000 from Stabilization Fund to Fire Department, Personal Services non-overtime, future fiscal years will be slightly stressed by this additional cost. That's accepted and placed on file. From the Mayor, in accordance with Mass General, General Laws, Chapter 44, recommending that the City Council authorizes an appropriation of $7,800,000, recommended by Attorney Richard Manley of Lock Lord LLP, the City Bond Council, in order to provide funding through borrowing set amount to pay costs of making improvements to the City's wastewater treatment facilities. Subsequent fiscal years may require additional rate increases to pay potential additional costs from the need to replace the current O&M contract, which is expiring. When the specific impact of this becomes known, recommendations will be made. That's accepted and placed on file. From the CFO, in accordance with Chapter in accordance with Section 5 of Chapter 324, the mm -hmm. Acts of 1990, certifying the proposed appropriation and loan order of $7,800,000 for purposes making improvements to the city's wastewater treatment facilities. A rate, increase, a rate increase of 5% will be necessary to ensure the continuous provision of services. This percentage is comprised of the combined effect of the cost of debt service on the subject loan plus the cost of impact of sh uh, shipping sewer sludge out of town rather than burning and landfilling it on the site. The present rate structure has not been adjusted for this change. This is a conditional certification which must appear on the loan order. Subsequent fiscal years may require additional rate increases to pay potential, potential additional costs from the need to replace the current O&M contract which is expiring. When the specific impacts of this becomes loan, recommendations will be made. 
Accepted and placed on file. From the mayor, in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, recommending that the city council authorize an appropriation of $42,000 from the stabilization fund to assess his debt personal services other than overtime, $2,934. Auditor's debt personal services other than overtime, $7,740. Cemetery debt personal services other than overtime, $1,018. Council of Aging personal services other than overtime, $1,166. DPW Refuse Division personal services other than overtime, $205. DPW Water Enterprise Personal Services, other than overtime, $3,045. Election Commission Personal Services, other than overtime, $2,924. Finance Department Personal Services, other than overtime, $205. Fire Personal Services, other than overtime, $3,653. Board of Health Personal Services, other than overtime, $7,726. Police Department Personal Services, other than overtime, $1,132. Procurement Department Personal Services, other than overtime, $730. Public Property Personal Services, other than overtime, $3,653. Tax Department Personal Services, other than overtime, $80. Treasure Department Personal Services, other than overtime, $3,870. An order to fund the agreement between the city and the Brockton City Employees Union regarding compensation and positions reclassification study. The letter of agreement is a result of lengthy bargaining between the city and the union over the upgraded reclassification study conducted by D.J. Jacobs Consulting Company, Inc. The study was agreed to as part of the memorandum of, of understanding for the period of 7116 to 6319 between the City of Brockton City Hall Employees Union. The total amount is $40,081. That's accepted and placed on file. From the CFO, in accordance with Section 5 of Chapter 324 of the Acts of 1990, certifying the proposed appropriation of $42,000 for the purposes of funding the letter of agreement between the City of Brockton and the Brockton City Hall Employees Union for future years, the agreement will place a modest <clears throat> financial pressure on city and employees, and he recommends funding them. That's acceptable and placed on file. Okay, we have the appointment of Tanya Tillman of 1092 North Main Street, Brockton, to the Elections Commission for a term of four years, and Council December 27, 2018. Ready to refer to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report is favorable. The question is on confirmation by a roll call. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative. The appointment is confirmed. The appointment of Carol Roberts of 755 Crescent Street to the Procton Housing Authority Board of Commissioners for a five-year term. And Council January 14, 2019, ready to fit the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. The question is on confirmation by a roll call. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative. The appointment is confirmed. An appropriation of additional grant funds in the amount of $175,200 from the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security Fiscal 19 Municipal Police Service Staffing Grant. The City of Brockton Police Department Fiscal 19 Municipal Police Servicing Staffing Grant Fund. In Council January 14, 2019. Reading for the Standing Committee on Finance, that report was favorable. The question is on adoption by a roll call. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative. The order is adopted. An appropriation of total grant funds in the amount of $125,000 from the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security Office of Grants and Research, fiscal uh, 20, I'm sorry, that's why, 2019, Mass Municipal Public Safety Staffing Grant to the City of Brockton Fire Department, SFY 
2019 Mass Municipal Public Safety Staffing Grant Fund in Council January 14, 2019. Ready to refer the Standing Committee on Finance. That report is favorable. The question is on adoption by a roll call. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darren Court? Yes. Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative. The order is adopted. An appropriation of the total grant funds to the amount of $544,527.37 from the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, Fiscal 19, Senator Charles E. Shannon, Jr. Community Safety Initiative Grant to the City of Brockton Police Department, Fiscal 19, Senator Charles E. San Shannon, Jr. Community Safety Initiative Grant Fund. And Council January 14, 2019, writing for the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. The question is on adoption by a roll call. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darren Court? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative? The order is adopted. An appropriation of total grant funds in the amount of $9,253 from the Massachusetts Service Alliance to the Brockton Public Library. There is a $10,405.92 match required. End Council, January 14, 2019. Ready for the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. And the question is on adoption by roll call. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darren Court? Yes. Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative. The order is adopted. We have an appropriation of the total grant funds in the amount of $13,586 from the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, Department of Fire Services, 2019 Student Awareness of Fire Education Grant $10,386 to the City of Brockton Fire Department Fiscal 2019 Student Awareness of Fire Education Grant Fund and $3,200 to the City of Brockton Fire Department Fiscal 2019 Senior Safe Grant Fund. End Council January 14, 2019. Ready for the Standing Committee on Finance? That report was favorable. The question is on adoption by roll call. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darren Court? Yes. Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Resolved to invite the city solicitor or a representative from the law department to inform the city council and the public as to the new contract with Comcast or if the new contract has not been signed, information as to where we as a community stand on this issue. End Council, October 22nd, 2018. Reading for the Standing Committee on Finance, that report was favorable. The question is on adoption by a roll call. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darren Court? Yes. Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. Zero in the negative. The order is adopted. Get down to 32, right? I will go to 32, yep. All right. <clears throat> order that the common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Brockton require the laying out and acceptance of Baldwin Road extending from Colgate Road westerly and northerly to Vale Street. For that purpose, it's necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and lay out as a public street away of said city of Brockton. It's approved, a revote required to be in compliance with a 30-day time frame for recording. Um, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Council uh, I move that we take uh, items 32, 33, 34, and 35 collectively. Second. Uh, and that we act on them now. And suspend the rule and act suspend on the Suspend the rules and act on the check. Huh? Okay. You can't have a hearing on this? Oh, you have to have a hearing. No, no, the hearing, the hearing has all been taken done. What happened here is that it went 32 days. We could register it, have it recorded in 32 days, but 50 years from now, somebody could look at it and say, how come? So we decided better to play it safe do it within a 30-day period and just take the vote over. Thank you for the explanation. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
Any further questions on that? No. Uh, a motion was made to take them collectively and act on them tonight. All those in favor of taking them collectively and acting them? All those opposed? We will do that. Mr. Clark? Okay. That the common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Brockton require the laying out and acceptance of Boundary Circle extending from Randolph Avenue east of Lee and not only to Brookville Avenue. For that purpose, it's necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and lay out as a public street away of said city of Brockton. Approved, revote required to be in compliance with the 30 day time frame for recording. Audit that the common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Brockton require the laying out and acceptance of Braintree Avenue extending from Boundary Circle, westerly and northerly, to Brookville Avenue, a distance of about 648 feet, 600.48 feet, and for that purpose, it's necessary to take easement for highway purposes and lay out as a public street away of said city of Brockton. Approve revote required to be in compliance with the 30 day time frame recording. Order that the common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Procton require the laying out and acceptance of Vale Street, extending from Norwich Road westerly to Upton Street, a distance of about 636.65 feet, and for that purpose it's necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and lay out as a public street away of said city of Procton. Approved, revote required to be in compliance with 30 day time frame recording. The question is on adoption by a roll call to take items 32, 33, 34, and 35 collectively. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Enery? No. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. DeCastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Ten in the affirmative, one in the negative. The order is adopted. Mr. Oh. President, for reconsideration, I hope that it does not prevail. A uh, motion for reconciliation and hopes that it does not prevail has been made and second. All those in favor of reconciliation? All those opposed? It fails. Mr. President, if I could you, I, I was going to ask legal counsel, who, whose responsibility is it to record these? The engineer. The engineering yeah. department? Yes. And there's a 30 day time window. There's so a we 30 just day slightly missed we, it. we came just in between it. Yep. We found out we could do it, but in the future could lead to problems. Yep. And it was stated that it would be much easier and better to re, re vote it and get to it in. To re vote it. All right. Get it in. Nothing else changes just to make yep. the. Yep. Just cleans it up. To be a good Thank you. Life. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank, Thank you, uh, Council Sullivan. Uh, Mr. Clerk, item number 36. 36. Order that the sum all, $7,800,000, is appropriated to pay costs of making improvements to the city's wastewater treatment facilities, including the payment of all planning and engineering costs, and all other costs incidental and related thereto. And that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the mayor, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 44, and or Mass General Laws, Chapter 29C, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the city. This order is referred to finance. 37. Order, an order to fund the agreement between the city and and the Brockton City Employees Union regarding the compensation and position reclassification study hereby recommends that the City Council authorize the appropriation of $73,000 from the stabilization, stabilization Fund to various departments as part of a memorandum of understanding for the period of 7116 to 6390 between the City of Brockton and the Brockton City Employees Union. This order will be referred to finance. Audit in order to fund the agreement between the city and the Brockton City Hall Employers Union regarding compensation and position reclassification study. The City Council authorizes the appropriation and the amount of $42,000 from the Stabilization Fund to various departments as part of Memorandum of Understanding for the period of 7116 to 6319 between the City of Brockton and the Brockton City Employees Union. This order will be referred to finance. Order that the City Council hereby extends the moratorium to prohibit retail stores from operating and preventing any business license to issue in the City of Brockton relative to the sale of recreational marijuana for a finite period. 
to allow the City of Brockton Planning Department to convene and vote on the pending ordinance relative to the regulations and zoning marijuana facilities. The moratorium shall be extended for a brief period and be in effect through and including February 28, 2019, or until such time as the pending city ordinances for licensing and zoning receives final passage, whichever shall be sooner, to ensure the final and proper passage of the pending city ordinances. President, mm -hmm. Council Sullivan. I'm going to make a motion uh, that we act on the suspension of the rules and vote on this tonight. Reason being is the current moratorium um, uh, lapses in three days, the 31st. Um, as our legal counsel said, uh, Mr. May has uh, represented to us that the planning board is meeting February 5th. Um, so this is kind of belts and suspenders, kind of dotting the I's, crossing the T's. If we continue it and, and take a lawful vote, the moratorium will be earlier of. We're meeting again the 11th of February, um, but it, it, this is going to protect the integrity of the council and everybody that's on the ordinance that's worked so diligently on it. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the order has been properly made and properly seconded that, that we... Uh, uh, Take this on under suspension rule and uh, ordain it tonight, uh, Council Fowler. Councilors, I have no objection to doing that tonight. I would like to ask our legal counsel to comment or give some guidance on the fact that we, we do have two duly established marijuana facilities in the city who are all ready to go. Frankly, I thought the planning board was going to hold a special meeting so that this would be expedited, and I don't know what happened. I, I, I think the complexities of running the city are such that these boards that meet once a month may have to meet maybe every three weeks, or they may have to have special meetings the way we do. But at any rate, we're delaying it again. And uh, I don't know Mr. Noble, other than shaking his hand a couple of times. I have no interest in the marijuana industry, but in terms of fairness, uh, I'd like to hear if they could be exempted from this or what our legal counsel's recommendation would be. Um, so just um, we did comment on that at finance a few months ago. I think it was back in October. And my comment then was that our licensing regulations had not yet passed. The licensing aspect of it has passed. Right now is pending zoning. So the zoning doesn't change as far as where the operations of the um, medicinal sites can operate. They can still operate at their facilities. That doesn't change them. But the one thing that it does um, require in the zoning is for them to go through um, a site plan review. Um, and that's something that um, the planning uh, board will weigh, on, weigh in on um, at their February 5th hearing. So it's not that they're exempt from the zoning requirements because as part of their application they would still need to certify the site plan. Um, but their location is, is grandfathered in. Um, so my recommendation would be to just let the, the time pass. Um, it should hopefully um, be available for a full city vote um, at the February 11th meeting. So even though it says the 28th, as long as it's passed before then, that would be the date of effective. So the benefit would only be about an 11-day period um, for, for those sites. Well, just, just in response to that, I would say respectfully, if because of weather, if because of lack of a quorum, the planning board doesn't meet, then I, I think we need to revisit this issue. So I, I, I regret that we can't do anything, but I would never argue with a lady and a lady lawyer. So uh, I understand. <laughs> thank you, Councillor. Mr. President, you heard He's, Yes, sir, Councillor Ionary. Thank you, Mr. President. By mind, and uh, I, I guess I fall on the heels of my colleague, City Councilor at Large, uh, Councilor Fowle, in regards to the same somewhat concerns that he's just addressed um, in regards to this matter. And it has nothing to do with the Ordinance Committee and all, and all the work they did and all the diligence uh, that they did to get it um, taken care of as much as at one point in time when I attended uh, one of the meetings as Council President, you know, the paper had to write that I was uh, irate that night and I was yelling at everybody that was on the Ordinance Committee, which was totally, totally in effect, uh, you know, was, was totally defunct to be truthful with you. Um, my concern was that we would get, you know, through this in a faster pace, but I think we did the best that we could um, for what we had uh, working in front of us. But I, I do have the same concern because of, of the locations, which are in Ward 3, um, in an industrial zoned area, not bothering anybody, doing their job uh, as, as in good health has been doing for the last two and a half to three years, and I think has brought us in, in, that, in that period of time well over $275,000. and. 
I just think that, you know, probably the last couple of months he might have been able to bring in close to about $800,000 if he had been already set up to, to do the recreational piece that um, he's grandfathered to do. So I, I have the same concern, um, and, and I agree with Council Fowle. Uh, I don't want to hear next month, well, we don't have a quorum. You don't? Well, then someone's got to step up to the bat and say, well, then I guess we make the planning board a little bit larger and we start to do the job the right way because that to me is, is going to, it's not going to fly. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to vote in favor of this because of that situation and the fact that we're still losing revenue and, and we need to start to make some of it, whether people want to or not, it's law, let's work with it, let's get it over with, let's just keep moving forward. But again, I want everybody to understand it has nothing to do with the audience committee because they did an omen's job of getting things done. Um, everything here in front of me this evening that I can I can read, but um, I just feel that um, you know this particular business in good health is, is is losing out, and so won't the other because if you're paying attention, you go West Chestnut Street, you'll see a dilapidated building that's all all been remodernized and and, and it's ready to go. It's a nice looking building. It's going to be a good looking building when it gets inside, and their job is going to be medical marijuana with just recreational, not all in the, in the arms of what David is doing in that full building, which I believe he now leases the whole, the whole building. So, but in any case, if not, I agree with Council Fowler that we need to revisit the issue. If it doesn't, that's, that's, not, that's, not, fair, that's not fair to them. You know, it's like me telling the guy, you can't pick your car up yet. You gotta wait another 10 days because something, uh, that's not right. I knew there was a car thing coming. You knew it. Not anymore, I, I don't, know. Councillor Sullivan. Mr. President, I, I, I just wanna say a couple things. We got bashed by the mayor a dozen times in the newspaper. We were dragging our feet, we were anti-business, all this crap, and that's what it was. It was crap, it was bogus. I asked as chairman of the ordinance committee, Mr. May, who works for the mayor of the city of Brockton, when are you meeting? He said, first week of January. First week of January. He said Mr. Noble was there that night. He said that to us. So that's why we continued it until the end of January or sooner. So if anybody has a gripe, it should be with the mayor of Brockton vis-a-vis -vis Mr. May. Because when I reached out to him this week saying, where's the recommendation? He said, oh, a meeting February 5th. February 5th, you know it expires on the 31st of January. It has nothing to do about lost revenue. It's procedural practice. <laughs> we are obligated under Massachusetts general law. We are charged as elected officials to follow the law. The law says we cannot do a final passage till we have that recommendation. It's clear. You know, these guys aren't losing money. They might be losing money prospectively relative to recreational, but they're doing all right with medical. So again, what's fair is fair for everybody. But if anybody has a gripe, it's not with us. It's with the mayor of Brockton and Mr. May. So if they can't have a quorum, Get rid of the board and get new people that are going to show up. I was on the planning board for five years. I mean, I didn't get paid a dime. I went to every single meeting. Susan was in as well. So, you know, I, I, I take offense to the fact that people are saying we're dragging our feet when we could have passed this thing tonight if the people represented to us that they were going to meet in January, which was bogus. It didn't happen. Why it didn't happen, I have no clue. Call the mayor's office. But I'll tell you, I'm getting sick and tired of getting kicked after representing the city of Brockton for 13 plus years. You know, Moses was there, Tim was there, Wynn was there, Tom was there. We met eight or nine times. She, poor Shannon was there all the time. So, I mean, and, and Phil's office. So, I mean, to talk about this, go in circles. Listen, we'll get, we should vote on this tonight. If people want to vote on it, you know, that's up to you. But we should vote on this tonight, protect the integrity of the city council, follow the law, Massachusetts general law, which we have to do. And then they meet the 5th, we pass it the 11th, so be it. I mean, it is what it is, but, you know, I don't know what the planning board's agenda is, but to attack us on a regular basis is, is uncalled for and unconscionable. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Councilor. Thank, you. Madam. Thank you. Good evening. I just want to say, practically speaking, the deadline for getting on the planning board's February agenda has passed. So even if we did something different tonight for these two businesses on West Chestnut Street, they can't get on the February agenda. They won't be heard before March. And it's the same result they would be heard by, on March if we, if we weigh in on this on February 11th. So practically speaking, we should just hold, you know, stay the course, as Attorney Resnick has suggested, and, and uh, plan on voting on this on February 11th. And if the planning board doesn't have a quorum, and they usually do have a quorum, um, we, should, we should insist that they have a special meeting prior to February 11th so we have the results. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Castro. Uh, Councilor Ali, do you want to say something, or you're okay with this? 
I, I didn't have my hand up, no. Oh, you did? I thought I thought I saw it, and I thought you were, oh, you wanted to say something. Uh, I mean, with regard to what Council um, Sullivan just said, I think that, um, you know, as a body, uh, we do have a solemn obligation not just to be here, but also to represent the entire people. I believe probably like, uh, a month, probably like was a month ago, and I believe it's a noble OZ in regard to this, th this issue. I think that, you know, if we are here, we are here for a reason. And if some people got appointed, and obviously we voted for them to be on this board. I think we voted for them because we believe that they will be able not just to show up, but to do the job accordingly. So I don't think we should, we should be on a waiting list waiting for them to act on whatever they have to act on. Because this is something that has been going on for so long. And at the beginning, we take a lot of heat for that. A lot of heat giving the fact that it was up to us not doing it. And I think, like he said, this could have passed tonight. But given the fact that we don't have the information that we need based on them, I think it's somewhat like putting us on wait, given what's going on. I think like Council Susan Nicasso just said, regardless what we do tonight, they're not going to be able to go on, that, on that, that next meeting, which means we are thinking about March. So for me, I think this is unacceptable because for so long we've been throwing under the bus saying that, you know, we don't want to do the job or we don't want to do certain things. So I think it's important, like, 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 like Council Sullivan said, that if you get appointed on those boards, and I, and I hope you guys take notice in regard to who we are, appointing who we are voting to vote on because if you if you submit your name to be on those board I believe you should take the responsibility to do the job accordingly although you don't get paid but I'm assuming that it's a responsibility because they don't force you to, to be on those boards so if we come here we not only voted for you but we assume that you will show up and do the job so I think it's important for us tonight not just to talk about this issue but to understand whenever we see a appointment come across us to determine whether or not we believe that person will be able not just to be there, but also to be there when we need that person. So for me, I think it is pretty bad because I was excited about voting on this tonight, but given what's going on, so for me, I think that you know we have to learn from this, and hopefully in the future, this doesn't repeat again. Because I feel like whenever we are about to do something that will be good for Brockton, for some reason, something stops us. So I believe enough is enough, so we're going to learn from this tonight, and hopefully, you know, like you said, we're going to have to wait until March because they have a deadline, and according to the law, they have to follow it. So knowing that they will not be able to be on that, on that next meeting, which is February 5th, so we have to wait for March. So I think that all of us can learn from this, and all of us should learn from this. And hopefully, when we face an appointment, I, I put emphasis on this because I was on the board of trustee for the library, and I believe I show up every meeting. Not because I could, but I know I have to, because I, I put my name, because I know that it wasn't, gonna pay me any money but I stand up because they asked me to do so. so if, if I did it I think everybody who's on any board should be able to do so if you cannot serve just move on because I'm sick and tired of coming to those meetings about to do something what is good for the city but at the same time we have to wait for people so um, thank you Mr. President. Thank you Councillor. Um, I just wanted to is, is there any no other I, I just wanted to I mean to caution us here we are we have discussed marijuana to, to nauseam in the sense, and we're not here to discuss the, the merits of the, of the ordinance one way or the other. We're just here basically voting for, to extend the moratorium so we can cover the city, which expires in a couple of days. Uh, so we don't meet again until the 11th. In reality, we will have a gap between now and the 11th. So by not voting for this, and if it doesn't pass, we are running the risk of delaying this process even further. So I just want to make sure I, I caution you folks, my colleagues, that voting for this, we're not really doing anything to punish anybody other than ourselves, because then we will go uh, forward without this in the books to protect the city, more, more directly the city council. So. Uh, the, I believe that the, uh, the planning department and the planning board should have done what they needed to do, and there's nothing according to our, our council uh, here that basically says that they cannot have special meetings. But that's not what we're here to discuss. We're here to discuss the fact that we need to extend this to protect the city. And that's what I think we need to be clear about this. Huh? Um, and then the other thing that the city would run the risk of is if the moratorium um, isn't extended, there is a gap between passage. And if someone runs their application to the city, they may say that, well, we're grandfathered in. There was no zoning um, requirements at the time of our application. 
Um, and these are extensive. They are parts of the application that do apply to the RMDs. Um, so it's, it's just a risk that you would leave uh, 11 days subject to future litigation of the city. Yeah, so let's not cut our noses here, Councilor. Uh, you mean what uh, the Council President just said in reference to what we are discussing, I believe it is important for us to actually act on this. And I was going to know on it. But based on what you said, and according to the council attorney, I believe I'll take your advice for it. Because how do I put this? It's not a, it's not a way of frustration, but what, 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 what drives me crazy is that uh, Mr. May has been doing a lot of things in regard to what's going on in the city. So I'm not going to go in depth to it, but I'm sort of like mad. Mad in the sense of not taking responsibility to do stuff accordingly. And I mean that. And I will assume that responsibility on my own. But in reference to what you said, I think that I'm going to vote yes on it. I'm going to vote yes on it solely based on what you said, because I trust your judgment, and I will take it from there. Thank All you, right. Mr. President. I think not having any further comment, I think the question will be on ordination of this. It is ordination. It, 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 was, it was being referred to ordinance, so if, it, if we're acting on it tonight, it's an order. Through an ordinance. We're going back to adoption. Boy, I sound like the, the Trumps. I sound like the Trumps. <laughs> well, the question is on adoption by a roll call. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. 11 in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Uh, the motion has been properly made and properly second for reconciliation. Hope that it does not prevail. All those in favor of reconciliation. All those opposed? It fails. Uh, Mr. Clerk. An appropriation of the total grant in the amount of $7,109.69 from the Board of Health Massachusetts Association of Health Boards grant <clears throat> to the City of Brockton Board of Health Mass Association of Health Boards Grant Fund. That uh, item will be referred to finance. An appropriation of $80,000 from the Stabilization Fund to Fire Department Personal so uh, Services Non-Overtime. Uh, that too will be referred to finance. All the items on the agenda are available in their entirety for review in the City Clerk's Office for those interested parties. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Clerk, uh, Council Ioneri. Mr. President, if I might, just uh, for a moment of personal privilege, if I may. You may, sir. Thank you, sir. And uh, I just want to, uh, a couple of quick comments. Um, I know a few weeks ago when I was thanking some people, I, I forgot to thank Aaron, who puts in a lot of time here. You know, he's behind the scenes here, putting a lot of time, putting a lot of time with me when we were moving around. Um, he put in some hot nights at the War Memorial Building, just as we did as well. And of course, our audiovisual person that sits right over in the, I always forget her poor name, I'm sorry, but she does an outstanding job and she followed right along. But I just wanted to make sure that um, he got the right, uh, right kudos as well. I just want to make mention um, to the councilors that uh, if you have a chance to, to go upstairs, um, you will see with the, um, a little bit of a dress up in the committee room where the clerk um, started the process with the, the building superintendent and uh, the committee room um, got painted, cleaned up and table got done and uh, things got done with, um, uh, with the help of not only just the building superintendent and his staff but with the clerk staff and, and others there and um, they did a nice job um, you know, making, making the room um, cleaner as everybody was saying they wanted something uh, different and I think we we did that with um, different furnishings are in there, and there's different furnishings even in the council, even chambers. In the council chamber. When we return, we're hoping we're going to be doing that soon. I would, I, hope so I would hope so. I would hope so too. But and at the same token, I just want to, um, um, I just want to make mention, and uh, and I hope that you you all do. Um, just let's keep in our our mind and our prayers also for uh, our building superintendent James Casseri and his um, lovely wife Ellie. Um, their situation and passing of their son this past weekend which was um, somewhat tragic so um, remember them in, in our prayers and their uh, calling hours are going to be on uh, on Wednesday at the Russell funeral so if we could just take a moment of silence just just for them thank you rest my peace uh, council Isaac are you um, no, I was going
ex express our sympathies to the Kasiri family. So, Ms. Uh, uh, he, Counselor, yeah. he did, he did, even though they're my constituents <laughs> and our thoughts and prayers are with them. I, uh, they're with them. Thank you. Uh, Counselor Lally. Personal privilege. Uh, you may, sir. Oh, thank you. I just wanted to uh, say once again that there's a, uh, I'm hosting a ward meeting January 31st, 6.30 p.m. at the Ashfield Middle School. Um, it will be a, uh, we'll, be, we'll be having a developer there to discuss his proposal uh, for a old factory on Spark Street. Uh, he wants to grow uh, recreational marijuana in the facility, so he's going to present his proposal to the residents. Uh, you know, and uh, he says that, you know, he's he's interested in hearing what they have to say. If they're not, if the neighborhood isn't interested, he's not going to, you know, try and push it past him. Um, also, February 15th at 3 p.m. Uh, is Lithuanian Flag Day at Brockton City Hall. Uh, so if you can make it, come on out. Thank you. Are you having hot uh, chocolate and Girl Scout cookies at the ward meeting, or what's the story? <laughs> Uh, Counselor, the Girl Scout cookies will be long gone oh. by the word meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Counselor Fowell, followed by Bogart and then Sullivan. Just, just a moment of personal privilege. You may, sir. Uh, by the way, these remarks are not meant to be a lecture. I, it, it's kind of like a call to action for us. This agenda has a number of issues on here involving finances. When I start reading that the CFO feels that unless we have a debt exclusion, which is a prop two and a half override, we're heading down a road which could have some profoundly negative implications for city services, I get worried. When I read that some of these are conditional upon a 5% increase on wastewater or sewer fees, I get worried. And so I think in my opinion, and I, I would be glad to hear from others, I think we need to get a handle on where we're going financially in this city. Mm. I think we need to know what it's going to cost for borrowing. I think we need to know what we need for engineering costs. I think we need to know what we're going to do with some of the outstanding judgments that are already leveled against the city, such as the Lopes case. I don't know how we would pay that. If you look at the balance in the stabilization reserve fund that was read tonight, $4,561,000, I don't know if that would cover it. And, and let's remember that if it is being appealed, if we are having ongoing litigation and it's outside counsel, that meter is running. I'm sure these outside counselors are not working for pennies on the dollar. So I'm just getting a little worried. Counselor Ian Erie and I have been through some very difficult times. Uh, I've been through them personally when I was on the police department and I saw people laid off, fire, police, teachers. So I think as a body, particularly with the budget coming up shortly, we really need to get a handle on this. So I don't know, I'll, I'll consult with the council president. Maybe it's a resolve to have the chief financial officer or his designee come in. I don't know when he's coming back, but, but we're, getting to, we're getting to crunch time, folks. I mean, we're, we're, we're locking ourselves into a position where we have less and less flexibility financially, and what I don't want to see is reach a point where we're doing all the right things, but the implications for us are that we're laying off teachers or library people or fire or police because we have no option. And, you know, I don't usually comment on national issues, but I'm not exactly excited about the economy and, and whether it's steadily going to get better or whether it's going to take a hit. Um, every time we give out pay raises, it has an implication for the next fiscal year. It has an implication for our pension system. I'm sure the pension liability or the pension payment will go up this year. The unfunded liability uh, payment is going to increase. I'm sure the Southeastern Regional School District appropriation will go up. So I'm sorry to be long-winded, but I just see a lot of red flags coming up that, that I think, I think the 11 of us are going to earn our keep in the next few months, getting a handle on things, finding out exactly where we're going. Uh, certainly, Council President Rodriguez can interact with the mayor and get as much information as he can, but uh, I, I, just, I just hope we can really drill down on this because I, I, I am truly concerned when I see mention of 
debt exclusions and 5% raises in fees for our residents because some people live paycheck to paycheck. They can barely make it. So thank you for, in, for your indulgence tonight, and I look forward to having all of us take a look at this in the future and try to make the best decisions. Thank you, Councilor. I, I feel your pain, uh, Councilor Borgard. Uh, thank you. I just want to make the announcement again that people, you know, this is the tonight we're speaking. It's January 28th, and I know a lot of people are, you know, doing their tax bills, but there's still time to do the abatements and any kind of, um, how would I say it, um, exemptions. And I do want to point out that it's been told to us that the assessor's office where you would go and speak to individuals on this issue uh, will be open at noon on, t on Thursday due to the uh, death, untimely death of one of their uh, members' sons, and department's uh, members' sons. And also, um, my board meeting will be on Tuesday tomorrow, January 29th, at the Downey School, beginning at 6.30, and the primary topic will be um, Old Colony Planning Council's uh, presentation on three streets, uh, Thatcher and Pine, Pine and Summer, and uh, the Thatcher Street Massasoit Community College entrance. So thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, mm -hmm. Council Sullivan, followed by Nakastro. Nick President, I just want to let everybody that's on the, uh, the ordinance committee know that um, we will be having an ordinance meeting. Um, date hasn't been set as of yet. It's going to be a Thursday. I'm just working with our attorney. Um, it will be after the 11th. Um, there are some matters. I know Councilor Fowler had filed some matters last year. We, we kind of focused strictly on the marijuana, and there's some other pending ones. So if you could just know, it's going to be on a Thursday. When, I'm not sure when uh, school vacation is. I need to figure that out as well, if anybody knows. Sure? And I'm sure you know. Yeah. Do you know? It's, it's, it's the week of the 19th, I think. Okay. Yeah. So it won't be that. I'll guarantee you that. <laughs> um, but I, I will send an email, and then and I'll work with the clerk's office and you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you. Councilor Castro. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I just want to remind everyone that this Wednesday night, January 30th, 6.30 until 8, at the Davis School, there will be a Ward 4 meeting. Now, Saturday evening, we all know, we've seen the newspaper, um, there was an armed robbery in Brockton and a chase that ended up in Ward 4, and um, as a result of the chase and the people dispersing into the woods of Ward 4, I had a lot of upset constituents, a lot of fear and, and anxiety, and I just want people to know that there will be people on hand from the police department to discuss what happened and, and their concerns at my Ward 4 meeting, so do join us. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Any? Mr. President, just, uh, just, one, just one point. For those that are members of the, of the Public Safety Subcommittee, I'm going to check with a date tonight with the Legal Council, but I'm looking at uh, Wednesday, February the 13th, possibility of having a, if that works with her, and, and if so, then we'll get that out, um, and it'll be held at the, uh, at the basement at City Hall um, on that particular night from 5.30 to 7. But we'll, we'll confirm that, but that's, what we'll be, that's when we will be meeting. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any further business? Go Patriots. Go Patriots. Go Patriots. Uh, having any, no further business of, uh, of the people in the city of Brockton, I adjourn the meeting. <laughs>